Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I want to step my hands for God this morning. but I got to start out and I have to tell y'all about Sunday school. If y'all have the opportunity for the ones that ha wasn't there this morning, if you can make it at 9.15 in the morning to our Sunday school class, you will be blessed, surely. Sister Brandy, awesome message today. She led the message today, man, and I'm going to tell you the spirit was moving. 
God is at work in this church, and if you come to find him, he'll show up. He's here. Come join us for Sunday school, please. Uh, let's start out with a prayer so we can get ready for the service. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house, Lord. We thank you for the traveling grace you gave us on the way here, Lord. I pray for traveling grace for everybody on the way home. Lord, I ask that you just open up your spirit in this building today. I ask that you pour out blessings upon your people, Lord. There's people here hurting. There's people here in need. They might need healing, Lord. I pray that you will put your healing spirit in this building, Lord. You said by your stripes we are healed. I pray, Lord, that financial needs will be met, Lord. You said you'll provide all of our needs, Lord. And we just worship you. We serve you. We're looking to you. We're leaning on you, Lord. You are our rock. You are our salvation. You are our fortress. And you are our deliverer, Lord. All of our hope is in you. It's in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's on the cross, Lord. And we know what you did for us. We accept that, Lord. And we're just going to lean on you throughout this day, Lord, and wait for your blessings to pour out. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with our pastor. I pray that you will anoint him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Lord. I pray that your words will flow out of his mouth, and we will all know that the word came from you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want to welcome anybody online, first of all. We're so glad that you joined us. I know there's a lot of churches that you could have joined, but hopefully you can come sit with us. We'll give you big hugs. We'll fellowship with you, and we can't wait to see you. Everybody here, we're family. It's family in this house. We uh, Are there any visitors in the service today with us, sitting with us? CW, you raise your hand every week. You don't know if you're coming or going, do you, C.W.? <laughs> All right, well, at this time, why don't we just take a little bit of time and tell everybody how much we missed each other and do some fellowshipping and hugging. Amen, amen, and amen. Woo, don't that feel good to be amongst family? It's time for our annual theme. If y'all don't mind, would y'all stand with us to recite the annual theme? 
Y'all ready? In a spirit of excellence, we are committed to celebrating 100 years of ministry by honoring the manifestation of what God promised us, by serving the many souls God has entrusted to us, and by responding to our prosperity with spiritual maturity. Because it's happening, just as our founders prayed it would, Joshua 1, 5 through 6. It's time for our announcements. Good morning. My name is Monica, and I would like to welcome you to the Bread House. We are so excited that you chose to come worship with us today. Here are your weekly announcements. Join Women's Ministry every second and fourth Monday at 5 p.m. Also, Brotherhood meets every second and fourth Monday at 5.30 p.m. here at the Bread House. For more information, please see Deaconess Holly Nelson or Brother Al Davis. Introducing the inaugural Bread Life Institute class, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. It will be a six-week small group study on the topic of forgiveness. Class will be held from 3 to 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoons beginning April 28th. The cost is $35 per person and includes the book and study guide. Register online using the QR code in the flyer in the foyer or in person with Sister Crystal Goins or Sister Sandy Reed. The registration deadline is April 14th. For more information, contact Sister Diane Miles. The Singles Ministry will meet April 14th, immediately after service in the Fellowship Hall. If you have any questions, please see Singles Ministry Leader LaDonna Brown. Bread House Teacher Certification Class will be held April 14th from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Lunch will be provided. This event is mandatory for all teachers and those who would like to teach in any capacity at our church. Attention Bread House, the women's ministry invites you to come get your game on April 19th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It will be a wonderful night for all of Bethlehem, new and lifelong alike, to come get to know one another. We'll have dinner, play games, win prizes, and hear a word from Sister Monica Marshall. Please sign up on the bulletin board in the foyer, and if you have any questions, see a member of the women's ministry. New member orientation will be held Sunday, April 21st, immediately following worship service. Lunch will be provided. If you have any questions, please see Minister Kristen Sierra. Attention high school and college seniors. If you would like to be recognized as a 2024 graduate, please see Sister Holly Nelson by April 28th. GIMA presents the Citywide Revival, bringing Greenville together with guest homilist Bertrand M. Bailey Jr. and hosted by our very own Pastor Micah D. Johnson here at the Bread House, April 30th through May 2nd at 7.15 p.m. nightly. There will be a musical Sunday at 4 p.m. with no service on Monday. Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church invites our community to celebrate our 100th church anniversary. It's a ball celebration with ballroom attire, photo video booths, dinner, music, and more. For more information and ticket purchases, see Sandy Reed, Sherdavian Mosley, or Lorraine Coates. The event will be held at the Springs Event Venue in Terrell, Texas, November 23rd. 2024, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Let's celebrate together. A very happy birthday to Diane Miles, April 15th, and Eleanor Brown, April 20th. May you be blessed with many, many more from all of us here at the Bread House. We want to celebrate you. Please submit your announcements to 
6413. Join us every Wednesday for Bread Life, our interactive Bible study with Pastor Micah D. Johnson, live or in person. And remember, here at the Bread House, our motto is, come as you are and stay as you grow. Good morning, church. Say so good morning, church. We're going to keep singing this morning. We got the brothers up here. Let's talk about God's grace. I'll tell you about it for me first, and then we'll sing about it for all of us. Amazing grace. Yeah, we live. 
I'm gonna get a little help on this one, y'all. I'm gonna get a little help. Brother Reggie gonna help me out on this one. Clap your hands.
Holy Spirit, stand in my body and think your thoughts, speak your words, hold hostage my attention, and pin my ear to the fence post of your wisdom. Whisper unto me those sacred truths that unlock the deep mysteries tucked away in this text. Lord, you be the preacher. I'll be the voice. Apprehend, arrange, and arrest all of my scattered thoughts. Lord, I'm not worthy to stand behind this, your sacred desk. But I beg of you, please don't punish your people for the sins of your servant. Now, Lord, have your way until lives are changed. Have your way until hearts are mended. Have your way until minds are regulated. Have your way until you're satisfied with our service. And at the end of the day, we'll take no credit for what you've done, but I'll give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. To these men who've done a magnificent job on today, help me celebrate these men singing from their hearts. Amen. Amen. Uh, good to see you. Uh, thank, we thank God for all of it. Uh, his presence that has saturated this place, his presence we honor God on today. We also give reverence and recognition to our ministerial staff, to our deacons, and to all of you who make up this Bread House Church family. It's also good to see those of you who are watching us online today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again, isn't it? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord again one more time? Amen. Amen. Um, good to see uh, Brother Cole back in service. Amen. I understand you've been ill, uh, and uh, it, was, it could have been another way, but we bless God that he kept you. Amen. If you don't know his story, just ask him about it. He'll tell you, I'm sure, but the Lord kept him. It could have been another way, and I thank God. I thank God uh, that he kept him. Amen. God don't spare your life for nothing. Sometimes he wants to get your attention. Amen. Amen. We could have easily been planning a funeral, but I thank God that he kept you. Amen. Brandy, good to see you back in church. Amen. I, I, you look different. It's just something different about you. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Girl, stop. You're blind to me. I can't see nothing up here. There's light. I just, I don't know what's going on. Amen. Amen. Uh, good to see you, darling, and good to see uh, who this fella you got next to you. I'm just... I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Amen. 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 And that's just that on that. And whoever got something to say, uh, tell them to come see me. Because we will, listen, we got some. And then there's that. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good to see all of you. Uh, listen, I had a very busy day yesterday. I, I, I was able to stop by um, and see uh, the uh, entrepreneurs workshop that went on and uh, man man Trey you did an amazing job with that yesterday man what an amazing job uh, we have some very valuable information it was so good we're going to do it again and give some more information so if you're a business owner or thinking about starting a business go see him man we got some great information for you what an amazing job he's doing with our business owners here at the church and I'm also grateful uh, I got the chance to go by Mount Elam, and let me tell y'all something. Miss Monica is a bootleg preacher. She is a bootleg preacher, amen. She just went over there and destroyed Mount Elam. She just went over there, and I'm telling you, I could not have been more proud. I went around telling everybody, man, this little white lady in my church is a bad preacher. Boy, I'm telling you. <laughs> I have not been more proud of her, man. I am so grateful. I love to see people who can actually study and teach. She took one word and just broke it all the way down. Listen, y'all, I'm telling you, she is somebody's speaker, and she won't even, she keep running, but I'm going to just let her keep running, because I'll run too, but I'll tell you this, she is somebody's teacher of Scripture, and I'm so proud of you. 
Amen. No wonder Dustin hang out with you. I don't blame him. You boost his property value. <laughs> Amen. So I'm so proud of her. Brad House, she represented our church extremely well yesterday. Amen. And if you want to hear more of her, come see us Friday. We having a game night. And she's going to be speaking that night. So the women's ministry are putting this on. Listen, if you're a new member, come so you can get to know all the old members. Amen. So come fellowship with your church. You don't get to complain. You don't know nobody if you don't get to know nobody. Amen. So come on out. It's going to be some games and, and a word and all that good stuff, some food. Amen. So come on out. Uh, we'll be, it'll be very, very, very good for you to come on out for that. This evening at 3 o'clock, three o'clock, three o'clock. I'll be doing our uh, teacher certification course. Uh, this will be one of two courses that you must take if you intend to teach at our church in any capacity. If you're teaching the Bible in any capacity, you must be Bread House certified to do so. With that being said, uh, once I offer and complete these classes, and if you have not taken them, you will only have 30 days to get your classes taken. Otherwise, you will be removed from all teaching capacities until you fix that. Amen. Amen. I can't let you be up in front of my people teaching my people, and I don't know what you're teaching, and I don't know what you believe. Amen. We got to get on the same page. Amen. Amen. I, now, y'all looking at me talking about saying, my people, listen, you belong to me by stewardship, not by ownership. So it is my divine responsibility to manage and monitor what's being taught in our classrooms. And if you teach here, it's because God called you and it's because I allowed you. And so I want to make sure that you do so under the umbrella of what we teach here. Now, if you don't believe what we believe as a church, that's great. You just can't teach here. Amen. So I want you to be a part of that. Come on out this evening. I won't keep you but an hour um, at the most because I ain't got but 30 minutes in me. So uh, we're we going to do that. And I, I promise you I won't keep you long because I got to get down 30 to go see my kids. Uh, ain't nothing wrong. They just said, they, they just texted me and said, Daddy, we miss you. I said, baby, I'm on the way. I almost canceled this little class because I want to see my girls. I ain't, I've been traveling so much, I ain't had the chance to spend time with them. So um, we'll be here at 3 o'clock. Uh, um, go get yourself something to eat and come on back. Um, now, Miss um, Diane is starting, a, um, starting BLI, our first class in Bread Life Institute on forgiveness Listen, if you have not heard her speak or if you have not been under her wisdom, you are in for a treat. Sign up for that class. If you're struggling with the area of forgiveness, and let's just be honest, many of us do, uh, sign up for that class. She, it, it's, it, she's going to do an amazing job with that. All right, meet me uh, in the book of Acts chapter 20. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 7 through 12. <clears throat> the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. It's where you'll find our text for today. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. Say amen when you found it. And um, if you don't have it, just look on with somebody or look up. I want you to think we made it up. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 through 12. And it reads like this. <clears throat> on the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered, and a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. And being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. 
But Paul went down and bent over him and taking him in his arms and said, do not be alarmed for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak and so departed. And they took the youth away alive and were not a little comforted. The text says they were gathered at church and he fell down from the third story dead. When they were gathered at church, he fell down from the third story dead. I want to talk about what's happening while you're in church. What's happening while we're in church. What's happening while we're in church? I've been preaching the Bible for nearly 25, going on 30 years. And one of the most frequently asked questions to me since I've been preaching is, if a believer commits suicide, do they go to hell? To answer this question, you must understand the parameters of salvation. Um, let me just cut to the chase. If a believer commits suicide, that does not punch their ticket to hell. Um, the only thing that can send you to hell is disbelief in Jesus, the risen Savior. It is just that simple. The only thing that can make you go to hell is if you do not accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And this, 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 this is just that simple. If a believer commits suicide, that does not mean they are going to hell. There's no scriptural or biblical evidence that supports that theory. As a matter of fact, one might suggest that Jesus himself was not killed, but he gave his life. He signed up for a suicide mission, which one could theologically suggest that and by that theory, you'd have to question Jesus' motives, even, uh, even Judas committed suicide, and we cannot say that that sent him to hell. What sends one to hell is being close to Jesus, but never accepting Jesus. Now, 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 now the posing of this question ignores an even greater question. The posing of this question ignores a far greater, a far more important question. And that question is, why would a believer commit suicide? Why would one who believes in the God of abundant life decide that death is their only option? Why would one who believes that Jesus is the answer choose to leave because they found no answer? That is the bigger question. Perhaps they were tempted by the eternal life in heaven so much that they chose to exit this painful life on earth, hoping to find and finally find an end to their trouble. Maybe they have studied and read so much about what heaven is going to be like that a sweet escape to eternal life beats being here for the next 30, 40 years. How can this person know God be a member of the church and still feel they are alone. How can one be a believer of the most high God and still feel like they have no other alternative but to end it all? Our feature text for today indi indirectly explores and possibly answers this very question. If we, our, our text for today invites our attention to the, to the unique book of Acts, 
The book of Acts stands by itself. Like, unlike many other books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are grouped called the Synoptic Gospels. If you look in the first five books of the Bible, that's called the Pentateuch. If you look at the 13 letters of uh, Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, these are grouped called the letters or, or the epistles of Paul. Like most books of the Bible, they are grouped into a certain literary genre, but the book of Acts stands alone in its own category simply because it is the birth movement of the church. It is the birth of the church as we know it. It is where we started this entire church thing. It is where Jesus left his ministry in the hands of his the disciples and the Christian movement was launched and began. It is in the book of Acts where we find the birth of the church and the book of Acts is accredited, accredited to be penned by the apostle Luke. Luke, being one of the disciples, is the suggested author of the book of Acts. And here in chapter 20, we, we find a very interesting story. And it sounds simple, but I want to go deeper into this text to not look at the obvious events of it. But I want us to find something in it that we've been missing for a number of years. And if you look in chapter 20, verse 7, it talks about how it's Sunday worship. They are gathered for church. I don't know exactly what time of day it was. I don't know if it was morning or in the evening. But what I do know is that they were gathered for worship and Paul is on to preach. Paul is preaching and I mean preaching, preaching. And they had, they had, they had planned to leave in the morning. But Paul preached so long that it was till midnight and they still preaching. Let me pull over her right here because I feel like y'all finna start being real messy and petty. <laughs> uh, ooh, pastor, we know how they felt. <laughs> Paul, Paul preaches, he's preaching for hours and hours. And I don't, I, I don't even know that I could stand that long. I'm gonna run out of stuff to say. Uh, but Paul is preaching for hours hours and the text says they were in this upper room where the where the sanctuary was and there were, it was a well lit place the, 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 it started out in the daytime and Paul is still preaching and here we are around midnight and Paul is still preaching still preaching and they've got these you got to remember they didn't have these fancy lights and switches that all that we had but they had what's called lamps and these lamps were, were fire basically they had fire on the top of them and that's what they use as sources of light and there were plenty of those it was a very well lit room this wasn't it wasn't dark it was very well lit what the text says and and the text says that they were in a very lit room and the story revolves around this young man named Eutychus. Eutychus was at church sitting in a peculiar place in a very dangerous situation. He's at church and he's been here all this time and it's midnight and Paul is still preaching. He's been preaching for hours and it don't even look like he's nowhere near done. And the text says, while the text talks about what happens to this young man while they're in church. And I, I want you to look past the obvious words that lay out on the scripture or lay out on the Bible. But I want you to look into something deeper that has been plaguing us. And I, 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 I'm literally be honest with you. It messed me up. It made me feel bad because we've been allowing this for so long. I want you to look at what's happening. Look at what's happening while we're in church. You don't know it, but while you're in church. There are people you don't even notice. And this, while we're in church, someone, I'm already on my first point, someone fell asleep. <laughs> I really could. I really could. I really could. I really could. But I ain't. But I ain't. But I would. I want to. It's so tempting, but I ain't. But I'm, I'm going to just, because I'm looking, y'all y'all, y'all forget that I'm up here looking at y'all. And some of y'all like, preach Pastor Jay. And some of y'all every Sunday like, preach Pastor Jay. <laughs> and some of y'all are like, preach Pastor Jay. Preach <laughs> I ain't making no names. I'm just saying, 
And I used to think it was me. I'm like, man, I got to get my preaching right because I got folks falling asleep in church. And, 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 and then I realized it ain't me. You just don't go to bed at night. <laughs> and if I can be up till what time I go to bed last night? 4.30 this morning? If, if I can be up till 4.30 in the morning and stand and preach, surely you can stay awake. I'm just, I'm just, that, that ain't even notes. I'm just being, I'm just being petty. I'm just being petty. I ain't really tripping about y'all going to sleep in church because um, I'd rather you be in church sleep than be at home sleep. Because you can still hear. <laughs> faith comes by, by hearing. <laughs> we, we walk by faith, not by sight. So I ain't tripping if you fall asleep. So for those of you who do fall asleep, you tell them your past, say, man, faith come by hearing, not by sight. I'm good. I heard everything you said. You ever felt like that? You, you were asleep. No, I wasn't. I heard you. <laughs> Come back to this message, Pastor. Come back to the message. This young man, Eutychus, if we're not careful, we will read this passage and think, oh, my God, Paul done bored this man to death or and put him to sleep. Or we'll, just, we'll, we'll assume that, oh, my God, he been preaching too long. That put him to sleep. No, it's, the text says it's around midnight. That's when folks go to bed. <laughs> they were at church for so long. They were at church at a time he was supposed to be resting anyway. This ain't got nothing to do with Paul. And truth be told, you fall asleep in church ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't in the Bible. I just felt like saying that, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, I want you to look at something. It, while we're at church, when I say someone fell asleep, I want you to look at what happens to the body when it's sleep. When the body sleeps, it is resting, but various body functions, they don't stop, but they slow down. We, 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 we don't see, and various body functions slow down. But also, when the body sleeps, it's alive, but it's not alert. There are some of us who are heavy sleepers. You know any heavy sleepers? I mean, the Lord could come back and send three tornadoes and four earthquakes, and they're going to still be asleep. And then, <laughs> don't y'all point at nobody. And then there are some of us who sleep real light. I mean, the, 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 the slightest pin drop. Uh-uh, what's that? No, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, to wake you up. You, you, some of y'all don't drew your pistol on a rat or a roach, and you don't know what's going on. It, it ain't even that deep, baby. It's just, it's just, you almost shot your whole house up because the loaf of bread fell off the counter, baby. It's not, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. It's all right. Uh, uh, so watch this. The, 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 the body, when it is asleep, it's alive, but it's not alert. Its bodily functions are functioning, but they're not functioning as well as they do when they're awake. I need to pull over and remind you that some people are spiritually asleep and you don't even know it. While we're in church, they are functioning, but functioning slowly. They're barely functioning. They're not even alert. They're just here. They just present, but they're not active. They are present, but they're not functioning. They are present, but they're not moving. And we are all in here having church and nobody knows it, but, the, but there's a, somebody sitting in the back, sitting on your row. They just functioning and everybody's shouting and dancing and praising and you don't even know it, but they are suffering. They are asleep and you have no idea. Look at the text. The text says a young man named Eutychus sitting at the window sank into a deep sleep. Now, look at his name. His name is Eutychus. His name means fortunate fate. It means that he is fortunate, and it also means that he's got, that, that his fate comes with wealth. It comes with prosperity. It comes with fortune. But this is a man that sleep. His name is one thing, but what he's dealing with is another. He, he's, he's, he's a young man. He's a young man. The text says he's a young man. I think I need to pull over right here because while we have in church, young people are asleep. While we're having church, they are not 
tuned into your service because they don't like your church. You've given them nothing to interest them. And if your church caters to just you, then you have missed the entire point of church. And you don't even know it, but while the grown folks are churching and singing and dancing and hollering, the young people are just sitting there looking at us because ain't nothing here for me. So what do they do? They sleep. Not physically, but they are mentally checked out. They are spiritually disconnected. They are alive, but they are not alert because there's nothing happening here for them. Now, if you look at this text, Eutychus, Eutychus is, 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 the text says, Paul, did, the text says he sank into a deep sleep. He didn't just go to sleep. He sank into a deep sleep. It was a gradual thing. Means there was a time he was alert, but as things went on, as church went on, he started to sink. What scares me is while we shouting and dancing and hollering and running and singing, folks are sinking and you have no idea. You lifting God up and somebody on your row is falling apart and you have no idea. There's y'all singing and they're sinking. And the Bible says he sank into a deep sleep. While we're at church, we are losing people to sleep. They are sinking in life's concerns. They are sinking. They are drowning in a sea of trauma and nobody even noticed it because all we're doing is dancing and singing and churching and nobody knows that they are falling apart. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves that all this is going on while we have in church because we're so busy having church that we're not being the church. You're at church, but you don't even notice your brother, your sister is sinking. And you probably would notice if you spent less time talking about them. Yeah, I'm going to run that rabbit because that's because I feel like it. You would probably notice folks better if you stop gossiping about them, stop being messy about them. Do you know why folks can't tell nobody in the church what's going on? Because y'all too messy. When they tell somebody, they're going to run tell everybody. You just might be the person they need to talk to, but they can't trust you. Because when they tell you, it's going to be all over the church. With your say sanctified, messy self. I'm going to say it the way I feel it because I'm mad about it. Because folks are sick, folks are hurting, and they can't even talk because they sinking. And you so busy shouting, but they can't talk to you because you messy. I wish... We could grow up to a place where people could trust us with their traumas. But they can't. They can't tell you that they're struggling in their sexuality because you're messy and you're judgmental. They can't tell you that they're battling depression because you're going you to you say some common nonsense. Just, well, just pray about it. Baby, if, I had, if that was the answer, I wouldn't even ask you. People are battling depression and all you got from weeping may endure for a night. Joy. Baby, I don't need a scripture. And some of this stuff, we don't need a sermon. We need a couch. And people are sick and they're sinking and you stand up having church. It's all happening while we're having church. And, 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 and so he fell asleep. The next thing he did was he fell down. I want you to notice, I want you to notice, because I intend to lift some interesting things from this physical downward spiral of this young man to explore some parallel spiritual downward spirals of people, all to show us what's happening while we're in church. This man fell asleep and then he falls down. See. When someone falls down, it's biblically symbolic of moral failure that results in demotion or a loss of status. You ever heard somebody fall from grace? You ever heard about that, somebody fall from grace? We, we, what, what I don't like about this, this culture of church today, this cancel culture of church, we are so locked in on exposing things, exposing people. Ooh. 
We want to get dirt on big people. We love to expose folks. And let me pull over right here and tell you, Brent House, keep your mouth off of God's anointed. Hear me, and I mean hear me, that is dangerous. It is very dangerous. I don't care who, if they did it, if they didn't do it, whatever. keep your mouth off of that. That is, you are trespassing on God's property, and I promise you, you will pay for it. But we live in a time where, where, where we, 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 are, we have an appetite to see people fall from grace. Girl, did you hear about what happened to so-and-so? Man, did you hear about what happened to that preacher? Man, did you hear about what happened to that person down there? Did you hear about what? Man, listen, we are so, we got such an evil appetite for mess. And at a time you ought to be praying for people, you praying on people. And it's sickening because it's all happening while we at church. And so, so, so when you talk about falling down, it is symbolic of someone who had a status, but because of their mistake, they fail. I want you to understand something. Be careful praying that God elevates you. Listen to me, y'all. Hear me. Be careful with praying that God take you to another level and take your, take your, because listen, the higher you go up, the more eyes on you. And the higher you go up, if you fall, the further down you're going to fall. Everybody want to go up. But if you ain't got the strength to stay there, you might well stay where you at. And so, 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 if you look at this text, it's in verse, in verse 9, I'm in verse 9. Verse 9 says, a young, I'm going to be preaching verse 9 the entire time. Verse 9 says, and a young man named Eutychus sitting at the window sank into a deep sleep as Paul still talked longer. Paul preaching, they having church, and this boy is asleep, and they still don't know it. Watch this. <laughs> he's, he's asleep, and nobody knows it. And now the text says in, 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 in verse 9, and being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story. Being overcome by sleep. Sleep, a lack of consciousness. He's not woke. He's not alert. He's sitting on the third floor in a window. And he's asleep. And nobody is even paying attention that he's in danger. We so, that, we so busy down here having church that you don't even know somebody's about to fall. Where are the people that don't just look at the stage but look around the room? And see, wait a minute, I need to go pray for this person. Let me call them this week and see, are you okay? I noticed you weren't looking right in church today. I noticed that you didn't, you didn't, say, you didn't seem yourself today. Where are those people at? Where are the people that just want to call and check on you? They ain't asking you about your business. They ain't asking you what's wrong. I just want you to know I saw you. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. And sometimes we need to look around and see our brother, see our sister. Instead of talking about them, baby, you need to see them. You don't even know they hurting. You don't even know it. The Bible says he was overcome by sleep. He was overcome by sleep. He was overcome by a lack of consciousness. And he fell from the third story window, which tells me he fell from a high place. From a high place. We are too busy having church to even notice Eutychus was in danger. We are too busy having church. It's too busy doing Sunday morning that we don't know somebody is falling apart on Monday. Because we're so busy, I'm going to mind my business and leave everybody else alone. But you don't even have enough compassion to look. Something ain't right with this sister. Something's wrong with that couple. Something's bothering this child. And nobody's stopping to look. Wait a minute, y'all don't see. He's up there sleeping, about to fall. Where are the people that, that will warn somebody, man, we, you about to fall, you about to fall, you about to fall, wake up, you about to fall, wake up, you about to fall. But we just sit there and let folks fall down so we can talk about how they shouldn't have been up there in the first place. And it's all fun and games until it's you that's done fail. And so it's often time, but watch this, 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 
is a young man. You know what's interesting? It's oftentimes people you have to look up to that are falling. He's on the third story. To see him, you got to look up. I'm going to take this for a little stretch for a minute because there are some people that you think people about to fall got to be, they, 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 are, they are the lower class. But I need you to understand, mm-mm. There are some strong people about to fall. They are hurting. And watch this. You don't know it because you're confusing their strength for you with their strength for them. They are strong for everybody else. And you, are, you don't even know it, but they are falling apart on the inside. And you so busy drawing from them that you don't even notice them. They, they, they are, they, watch this, people that fall down, this is from a high place. Do you do not know that you can be wealthy and still about to fall? You can be strong and still about to fall. You can be a leader in the church and still about to fall. You can be a pastor and still about to fall because depression, sinking, and weight does not have an address. It does not have a respect or a person. You need to understand it affects everybody. As a matter of fact, usually the stronger you are, the worse it is. And nobody knows it. You've been paying everybody's bills and nobody even knows you already gave your last three times ago. You've been praying for everybody else and nobody, and all they know is how you respond to their foolishness. But they don't even see the fact that what through, what's happening to you is killing them and they don't know what to do. They're the ones that always show up at the hospital. They're the ones that always show up and pay the bill. They're the ones that always, I'm going to be strong for my kids. I can't stand it here, but I'm going to be strong for my kids. I'm going to keep singing. I'm I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep dancing. I'm going to keep leading. But nobody knows on the inside I'm falling apart. And I've been about to fall, but I'm on this high place. And all people see is my gift. But they don't see my grief. Oh, Jesus. All they see is my gift, but they don't see my grief. They think because I'm strong that I can handle burying my husband. Because I'm strong. I ought to be able to handle burying my wife. I'm strong because he's the pastor. He can handle this. But you don't know it. But people are sitting in high places battling a fall that you don't even notice they about to fall down. And the text says he fell down from the third story. He fell down from the third story. People are falling every day from high positions. And nobody knows it. Nobody knows it. Your kids are pulling on you in every direction. You're the rock of your family. You're the one holding everything together. And if you, the only reason you can't fall apart is because if you fall apart, everything falls apart. That's the type of pressure you're under. And you sitting up, you're the matriarch of the family. And I'm saying this from a painful place because I don't know who died in my family and elected me to be that person. And I feel the pressure that comes associated with if I don't do it, nobody else does. So you mad about my stress relievers. You mad about how I chose to deal with it. Yeah, I cuss you out a couple of times because you don't even know I'm hurting my God you want somebody to notice your gifts but you need to see my grief and it's all happening while we having church it's all happening while we having church nobody knows it you a deacon about to fall apart you the pastor about to fall apart. You're a mother and your kids look at you as the strongest thing alive, but they don't even know it. you are this close to falling down from every pedestal that everybody puts you on and you're about to be at a place where you don't even care if anybody knows you fall. Because it's safer on the ground. Jesus than it is on the rooftop. It's safer on the ground because when I fall you can't ask me for nothing. You can't expect nothing from me because I'm, I'm already down. I don't know who I'm helping in here today but I need you to understand I need you to understand it's okay to not be okay. It is okay 
to not be okay. It's okay to be a spiritually mature, blood-bought believer and still be about to fall down. It is okay. I don't know who I need to give permission to, but I need you to understand me and I mean hear me clearly. It is okay for you to know God and still know grief. It's possible. And this, while we at church, no one notices people until they fall. While he was, when he fell asleep, nobody said anything. But when he falls down, everybody got something to say. Why is it that you don't notice me until I made a mistake? Whew. But for all you know, my mistake was connected to my fatigue. I, I did this because I've been angry for years and nobody knew it and you didn't notice me until I did what I did. Oh, she ought to stop sleeping with everybody. Yeah, but you didn't notice her until she got caught up sleeping with somebody. What you did notice is that she'd been depressed. While she was faithful, she was depressed. While she was faithful, she was sick in her mind and you said nothing. I don't know why he keep dealing drugs. Yeah, but you don't know all the times they had to go find, they tried to find jobs and nothing would work and they were trying to take care of their mama's house and their sister's house and their own house at the same time and so that it was easier to turn. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying if the only time you notice them is when they make a mistake then you have missed the mark we don't notice people until they don't fail we don't notice people until they have spiraled too far out of control and then you know what we do uh -uh, they should have did that they should because you judging their actions but you have no idea what led them to that place and you know what bothers me about it it's usually the folks that's judging can't yeah, you act like you ain't never done nothing foolish because you was going through. We all know it's wrong to drink or to get drunk. But ask them what took them to the bottle. We know it's wrong to be, un we know it's wrong to be unfaithful. But you don't know what these folks done been through. To before they decided to step out on their marriage. I'm not saying it's right. What I'm saying is get to know their problem before you judge their sin. Because if you catch them before, while they sleep, you ain't got to worry about them falling. If they'd have woke him up, he would have never failed. If you'd have caught his attention, you would, he would have never failed. And the problem is we wait till folks fall before we speak. And the Bible says he fell asleep. The Bible says he fell dead. I mean, he fell down. And finally, lastly, he fell dead. See, when the body dies, all biological functions that sustain life cease. There's no brain activity, there's no heartbeat, there's no breathing. The brain activity speaks of the mind, dies. The, the heart speaks of the emotions, dies. The lungs speak of the spirit, dies. And you don't even know it, but people are mentally checked out but they're still functioning and you so busy having church, you don't even know, they don't even care anymore. They just existing. They're just doing what needs to be done. They just functioning when they need to function. They show up at your meetings. I'm just here to do what I said, what I said I was gonna do because I don't want no smoke. I don't want no problems. It's easier that way. So I'm just here to do my part. They are mentally checked out. They could care less what's happening. They are emotionally checked out. Their, watch this, their spirit has killed. Their body is here, but they don't even have a desire, a passion, a spirit to do what they've been called to do. And nobody notices because they're dead in church and you have no idea that they died. You ought to be ashamed if you are a church member and you have not noticed the person on your road has spiritually died. You don't even notice they've just been coming to church. But they did. 
Everything about them has died. And you have not noticed. Oh, while we're having church, there's a question? Yes. Go for it. How do you respond to the situation when you try to help and they don't listen? The one who was asleep, I swear. How do you respond to the situation when you try to help and they don't listen? And they don't listen? Let me answer that question by saying this. Your help cannot be predicated on their ability to agree with you. Ooh, Jesus. My God, I think I just said something. Because see, some of us define help as though they agree with me. Stop trying to comprehend them. Here's the problem. You're listening to them, but you're not listening as them. There is a difference. See, if you, if you define helping as getting them to see it your way, you're not helping. Your help is when you are able to see it their way. And watch this. you got to abandon right and wrong and start seeing them. Because watch this. Most people know they're wrong. They just want somebody to see them. Don't be that person. What you doing up there in the first place? You're about to fall. Who told you to get up there? Somebody's drowning in the pool, and they drowning, and you, you shouldn't even, you know you can't swim. Baby, get them out the water first. But you are so busy arguing with people who are sinking. Here's the problem you need to understand, y'all. Maybe the issue ain't they don't want the help. Maybe you're trying to help them, and all they really want you to do is hear them. Don't y'all miss that. Learn when you want to help somebody. Listen, the boy that was falling, he's on the third story. You got one job, wake them up so they don't fall. Notice what your job is not. Don't ask them when the last time they ate, when the last time they went to sleep, when was the last time they got up early, what, what they got to do tomorrow. That ain't your business, baby. Wake them up. But, but you're so busy trying to help that maybe your, maybe your job ain't to help. Maybe your job is to hear. Maybe your job is to just sit there and let them tell you what's wrong. You do not have to agree with someone to relate to someone. I, 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 let me share this with you. My, my, daughters, my daughters are, are 19 and 21. I guess that means I can't be 28 no more. Um, my daughters are 19 and 21. And ever since they've been in junior high, we, I, I, we have what, um, what's called um, real talk conversations. And, and all they have to do is text me or their mama and say, I need real talk. And we are going to literally drop everything, get to the room and sit down and let them talk. And watch this, when they talk, we don't speak. It, let's say it's my baby girl. Then when she talks, the three of us are just listening. Watch this. And she can say whatever she needs to say without penalty, without discipline or nothing. Because I want you to, I want to hear you so I don't have to bury you. I'd rather sit through your depression than to suffer at your funeral. So when my girls say I need to have real talk, I'm not showing up as the bossy daddy. I'm showing up as a father that needs to hear them. And here's the problem. When you want to help, you want, the, you want to give people advice they didn't ask you for. You want to give them opinions they didn't ask you for. They just need to be heard. But when you hear them, they don't need your answers. Because you think the only way you can help is by giving them answers. And they're not here for your solutions. They're here for your heart. They're here for your shoulder. They're here for your hand. Because sometimes you can make matters worse giving answers. Yeah, you can. I think you should just leave him. And thank 
you ain't holly. And then we say this dumb mess. If I were you, you ain't me. You have no idea what it's like to be me. If I were you, baby, you weren't here 20 years. Sitting up next to a man I know is cheating, but I can't leave because my kids adore him. You weren't here when you, it's easy for you to say, if I were you. No, baby, you weren't here when I sat here and we, and, and, and they, I'm loaning money out that, that people don't even know I don't have to loan, but I'm giving it because I got a heart for my family. You weren't here all these times when they were lying on me, but I'm paying their rent. You were not here when they asked me privately, but, they, but destroyed me publicly you were not here so don't tell me if I were you because you are not me one of the most disrespectful things I've ever heard people say at a funeral is I know how you feel no you don't even if you did bury your mama like I buried mine you have no idea what it's like for me to bury mine and the text says this boy fell Sleep, nobody saw something. All while at church, he fell down. All while in church. And because he fell from the third story, he fell dead. The text says in verse 9, I'm still in verse 9, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. The higher you are when you fall, the worse your injuries are when you get down there. And nobody knows it, but it's all happening while we're at church. And you don't even know it, but they sang it in the choir, dying. Preaching in the pulpit, dying. Praise dancing, dying. Deacons, dying. Preachers, Dying, and you don't even notice it because all you notice is how good they are. They singing in the choir, dying. They are miserable, and they hide behind their humor. They're hiding because they, they're hiding behind their strength. They're hiding behind their loyalty. They're hiding behind their work, and nobody knows. They're busy, but they're dying, and nobody knows it because you don't even care enough to look past their gifts to see their grief. I'm done, KJ. You can play now. I'm done. You are so busy watching them work that you don't see them die. It's happening while we're in church. While you're in church. You, you thought, because the funeral was over, that they had got past it. They finally came back to church. They ain't crying no more. But you don't even know it. They can't come in here. They hate coming to their own church. Because they remember their loved one that don't sit there anymore. And you think they're strong, and they are, but you don't even know they're falling apart. And nobody picks up the phone to say, are you okay? You know why you don't ask that? Because you, you're so busy having church that we don't even know. you having rehearsals, but you don't even know why they act out the way they do, why they show out the way they do, why they silly the way they are. Baby, get to know somebody's struggle before you judge their strength. Dying. So this begs the question, all this time we've been talking about them dying in church, they're falling, and nobody's saying, the Pastor, what do we do? Paul gives us the answer in verse 10. Pull it up on the screen. Pull up verse 10. I want y'all to look at verse 10. Look at what he does. Look at what Paul does. And Paul went down. Stop. Paul is a theologian. He's the preacher. He is a high up. But when this boy falls down dead, Paul goes down. There's too many of us, we want to minister to people from right here. Tell them what to do from right here. But nobody cares until you get down here with me. Everybody wants to give advice from your mansion. 
from your high place. But it don't help for real until you get down with them. You know what the beautiful thing about Jesus was? He could have died anywhere, but he came down. He came down. I know one of the old folks would say he had to reach way down to pick me up. And if Jesus, being God's best man and man's best God, can come all the way down 42 generations to help somebody, surely you can come off your little high horse and help somebody. The text says, and Paul went down and fell on him. Whew, there's so much power in that statement. Because watch this. The boy fell down, so Paul falls down. Watch this, y'all. Don't miss this. People don't want to hear your advice. Sometimes they want you to relate. They want to know you understand. But you can never understand all the way up here. You got to learn to get down with them on their level. Meet them where they are. Text says he fell on him, literally bent over and fell on him. He made contact with him. He touched him. But some of y'all are so arrogant and so cocky that you act like you can't touch nobody because you're better than everybody else. But if Jesus can get his hands filthy by touching you, get yourself somewhere and sit down with your saved, sanctified, arrogant self. Who are you? Because how you think you got where you are if it had not been uh, for the Lord that was on your side, you wouldn't have the house you got, the credit you got, the car you drive. Be ashamed of yourself to get all the way up there and you don't have enough sense to send the elevator back down. He fought, the Bible says then he fell on him Whew. And he embraced him. He fell on him. And he embraced him. He, he didn't just come down. I'm going to just sit where you are. Because this is what some of us do. We'll come to your house. We'll, we'll come where you are. We won't touch you. We won't come down with you. But you know what he did? He, he, he said... He said, it ain't, you ain't by yourself. He hugged him. He embraced him. He said, I know it hurts. I know it's bothering you. But, I, but you're not by yourself. Sometimes people don't need answers. They just need to know they're not alone. And sometimes you got to hug and squeeze the life back into them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to hug and squeeze the life back into them. How do I know this? What the text says, the trouble not yourself, for there is life in him. He died. But you know what raised him from the dead? Love. 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 I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today to start paying attention to the people that's falling while we're having church. You need to come to church looking for those people. You know why? Because church does not begin when we start service. Church begins when the benediction happens. I'm going to teach right here. I'm going to teach right here. Let me make this make sense. You thought church begins when we start service. No, baby. That's corporate service. But church begins when the benediction is given and those doors are open and you got to go out there and be church. Be ashamed of yourself. For everybody you talked about that failed and you didn't even go see about them before they fell asleep. 
Let me tell you something. Some people only check on you because they need your gift. One, I won't mention this person's name, but one time I was really, really going through it. Really going through it, y'all. I was really going through it. And one of my members called me and said, Pastor, you okay? And I, was, I felt good because somebody noticed it. And then they said, we need you to get better so you can preach Sunday. <laughs> and there are some people, they only want you to get better so you can continue to serve them. They need you to get better so you can go to work and continue to pay their bills. They only care about your strength when it benefits them. But then there are some people who don't, who, Pastor, I just need to know you're good. I need to know you're all right. Do you need some time off? And there are some people, you need some people in your life that'll say, no, baby, we, you need to take a break, and I'm going to help you take it. It is okay for you to say no to people. Listen to me, y'all, and I mean I'm done when I say this, I'm done. I don't know who this is for, but... Stop feeling guilty about telling people no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop feeling guilty about that. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your children. Start telling people no. You know why? Because it's killing you to tell them yes. And they don't care enough to see about you falling. How much you going to help them when you die? And I'm going to tell y'all right now, I ain't going to let this church kill me. Because if I die today, God forbid, if I die today, y'all will grieve, maybe put a little black drape over my chair, and in, 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 in a matter of time, you're going to uh, gather your selection committee and find you another pastor. But Michaela and Jaya only have one daddy. Ain't but one of me for them. You can always find another pastor, but my daughters will never find another me. Stop letting folks kill you trying to help them. Learn to say no. I can't. I don't have it. Just because you got it in the bank don't mean you need to be giving it to them. I don't have it. You just can't. But what you need to remember is while we're in church, pay attention to the people that's falling. Just because they're strong don't mean they're not falling. And a lot of people leave church because nobody noticed them. Do you know what a pimp does? Oh, I'm going to teach this right here. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? You know where I'm going with this. You know what a pimp does? A pimp uses the woman and her assets. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> To benefit him. I've never understood the transaction because she doing the work, but he gets paid. Whatever. But, that, that, but watch this. There are some people who will prostitute your gift. They use what they need from you so they can live. You don't even know it, but they pimping your strength, your money, your time your resources, your efforts, they're using you. And you're falling apart. And nobody notices that you're the one about to fall. You're keeping everybody else up, but nobody knows you're the one about to fall. That's why I'm telling y'all, man, while we have in church, pay attention to the folks that are falling and you don't even know it. Father, we thank you for checking us on today. For telling us that we need to be, we need to be siblings, sisters and brothers paying attention to each other. Help us to be mindful that apologies are necessary. That listening ears are necessary. Help us to be watchful. Lord, show us 
those of us who've lost consciousness and we don't even know it. Help us to not be so caught up in church that we miss people. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today and you're broken, you're falling apart, I want to challenge you. And listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me. Because some of you won't move because you don't want, because you're strong and nobody needs to know that you're falling apart. And I, I get it. But I want to challenge you to step out of your comfort zone today. Because you're hiding behind your strength. You can't do that anymore. Come here. Come here. Bring it here. You, you, you're not, bring it to the altar right now. Bring it right now. Bring it right now. Don't think about it. Stop trying to be strong for everybody. Right now, this is about you. Give yourself permission to not be okay. I'm talking to the strong now. The strong ones. The family rocks. Them people that nobody knows is falling. Come here. Just come here. Just come here. Come here. Because cause I, I, I need, come here. I, 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 listen, I'm not, I'm not even going to pray into you. But we're going to do what Paul did. Come here. Come here. Stop playing with this. You, you've been doing, you, you're going through too much. It's somebody else. It's somebody else. Come here. Come here. It's not just, the, it's not just these. It's you too. It's, it's you too. We, we, we're not going to be, we're not going to be shouting and hollering and running and all that stuff. And we broken. We leaving. We come in church, to church broken and we leaving broken. Bring it. Bring it to the altar. Bring it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. Stop pretending. Stop pretending you okay. You're not okay. You're not okay. You're not okay. This ain't got nothing to do with being embarrassed and being shamed. You need to get over yourself, baby. Get it to the altar. Bring it to the altar. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Come on, bring it. Bring it. Don't play with this. Watch this. I'm going to... Normally, I'd be praying. But today, I'm going to do something different. Something to this altar. I want you to slip your hand up right now. Slip your hand up. Yeah, that's you. That's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I see you. All right. Okay, put your hands down. This is what we're going to do. We're going to hug life back into you. We're going to hug you till you feel better. We're going to hug you until life changes. It don't change your problem, but it makes you feel better. Does somebody notice you? Somebody know is that you know, notice you noticing that you're not okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Do you see how I fell on him? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's all right. It's all right. You ain't got to carry that by yourself. It's all right. It's all right. And if you're strong, just come come here. Help me hug somebody. In Jesus' name. You're not by yourself. Sometimes you ain't got to pray. Sometimes you just got to love on them and tell them you see them. Tell them you see them. You see them. You've been pulling on them for so much. You've been asking for them so much from them. But you don't even know at night they're hurting. In the middle of the day they're hurting. We love on you. We love on you with the love of Jesus. Just start loving on people. You got to just start loving on people. Sometimes it ain't about praying. But it's about loving on people. Some of you strong folks, come here. Help me hug on some of these folks that's broken. Come here. 
Come on, some of you strong people, help me hug on some of these folks and tell them it's all right. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. You're not broken. You're not by yourself. It's not just you. It's us too. You ain't the only one hurting. We gonna hurt. We, we gonna hurt together. I ain't got no answers. I don't got no scripture, but I got this love. This love. I got this hug. Come on, you gotta learn to hug on some of these strong folks. Who gonna be there for the rocks? Who gonna be there for the strong folks? In Jesus' name. Who gonna be there for the matriarchs of the family? The fathers, the rocks. Who gonna be there for them? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do it for his children. Thank you. Do it for his family. Thank you. Do it for him, God. So he don't have to carry it all by himself. Do it for him, God. Do it for him, God. In Jesus' name, don't let him go till you bless him, God. Do it, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, some of you strong folks. Some of you strong folks. Hug on some of these folks. Been the strong one for their house. The strong one for their children. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. In the name of Jesus, we squeeze life back into them, God. We squeeze life back into them, God. In Jesus' name, we bless you. We be strength, God, in Jesus' name. For my brothers, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for my brothers. We thank you for my brothers, God. We unite together in the name of Jesus. No more, they gotta be by themselves. They don't carry it by themselves. Let them know that we are our brother's keeper. In the name of Jesus, oh God, give them strength, God. Give them strength by your power, God. Let them know somebody notices to them. They're not by themselves. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, come on, somebody else, come on. Come on, let me put some life into you. Let me hug life into you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name come on you're not by yourself by yourself I don't care who you are I don't care who you are you're not by yourself everybody get up go hug somebody everybody get up go hug somebody tell them you're not by yourself you're not by yourself tell them it's okay to not be okay, okay. thank you thank you okay. in Jesus name in Jesus name okay. Every way she pour out, God, put it back, God. She don't have to do it alone. You are the husband. You are the father. You are everything she needs, God. When she don't have answers, be the answer. Oh, God, go to school with her baby and set fire to everything that ain't like you. Do it right now, God. In Jesus' name, come on, hug somebody. Come on, hug somebody. Love on somebody. I love you too, man.
Hallelujah. Finance, get to the back and get our, our baskets. We're going to give on our way out. I want us to give in this atmosphere. I want us to go home in this atmosphere. Listen, Bethlehem, get somebody's number you don't have. Call somebody, check on them. I know it looks like they fine, but they might not be. They might not be okay. Finance, get to the back. Get your offering together. Y'all get your seed. Get your offering together. Meet them in the back. We're going to give on our way out. 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 If you're giving on GiveLify, give on GiveLify. Get your offering in your hand. Get your offering in your hand. Get your offering in your hand. And we thank God for every gift. Father in heaven, we thank you for the offering that we're about to receive. As we sow into your kingdom, we pray that you would sow into our hearts, sow into our homes, sow into our health. Father, we sow with expectancy, expecting to reap that which we've sown according to what you see fit. Now, Lord, I pray that as we leave this place, that we begin to do church after we've had church. I pray that we be church because some of us are going to be the only church that somebody will ever know. I pray in the name of Jesus that every strong person that's struggling, I pray that you would not just give them strength, but I pray that you would give them power to be weak, power to say, I'm not okay. I pray that you would not just send answers, but I pray that you would send hugs, send love, send restoration, send joy. We can't fix everything, but you are the answer. Sometimes it's just your presence that we need. So I pray that even though this service is ending that at three o'clock in the morning when somebody is up and nobody else is answering I pray that you would be the one that never sleeps nor slumbers I pray by the power of your Holy Ghost that when people are up in the middle of the night in the middle of the day when they find themselves having moments by themselves I pray that your presence would meet them where they are and love on them in the name of Jesus now Lord dismiss us from this place but never from your darling presence and let us go Go in your love and in your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.